Well, good morning, everyone. This is Penny at Wisconsin Land and Water, and thanks so much for joining us today. We have a great lineup of presenters. Our presentation is Creating or Supporting a Healthy Lakes and Rivers Grant Program for your county's lakes and or associations. Pamela is here to answer all those tough questions. So um, we're glad to have everybody joining us. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Pamela. She is a Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources Lake Biologist for the five Northwest counties and the state's Lake and Watershed Protection Specialist. She is also the Healthy Lakes and Rivers Team Leader. She owns Shoreland property in Bayfield County where she enjoys almost all things outdoors with her D Wisconsin DNR fishery supervisor husband, Scott, and twin 10-year-old daughters, Cecilia and Karina. So great to have everybody with us. So I think that's about it. I'm gonna turn it over to Tom. All right, thanks, Penny. Uh, my name's Tom Onifre. I've been the zoning administrator and director of the Planning and Zoning Land Information Department for 24 years. I ended up getting involved in this project because of I was the chairman of the NR115 subcommittee for the Wisconsin County Association, uh, the Zoning Administrators Association. Uh, so as part of the team, uh, the Healthy Lakes team, I'd like to thank you all for participating. Uh, we look at your organization as an important partner in Healthy Lakes. So thank you very much for participating. Um, this is, a, the first slide is the team, the current team. Uh, we've had some members come and go, but the uh, basic core of the team uh, is still there. And so there's the uh, photographs. You can see who's on the team currently. Uh, in 2013, the Healthy Lakes team was formed as part of the DNR Lean Government Initiative. Uh, the goal was to bring different perspectives and areas expertise to together. Uh, we have county and DNR staff along with UW Extension staff. Uh, Pamela Toshner is uh, the DNR uh, lead on the Healthy Lakes team. Next. Healthy Lakes is funded through the Lake Management Grant. Uh, as many of you probably know, if you've dealt with these grants, they can be large undertaking uh, to work through. In keeping with lean government, Healthy Lakes look to streamline the grant process, process by making smaller grants available to fund shovel ready projects by reducing some of the hurdles in the grant process. By, um, we look to do this by keeping the project simple that way we could reduce review time, simplify the application for the property owner, um, cut some of the administrative tasks down for uh, DNR staff that work with the grants. Next. It took our team a year to develop the Healthy Lakes program, which actually even included coming up with the name Healthy Lakes because we just went into this with a concept. So uh, we had to start from the ground up. We did look at other counties um, in the states, some of the things they had done. Uh, we also looked outside of the state to uh, states like Maine and Vermont that had these types of programs. We used a customer survey where we um, surveyed landowners and professionals on uh, what we we're looking at to do with the grant. Uh, to get to details put together for technical and administrative aspects of the program. We ended up launching Healthy Lakes in 2014 with the first grant deadline coming in February 2015. Next. The main goal of the program has been and continues to be to increase property owner participation. Uh, and we wanted these participation in these simple voluntary projects, the projects being designed life habitat and scenic beauty. We wanted to make sure what we came up with was doable on the property owner level. So we did a lot of discussion um, using that customer survey information 
uh, going back and forth on different kinds of projects people could do, but things that people could do on their own. Um, that was our main goal, uh, that they could do them on their own and that they wouldn't have to hire somebody to do the work for them. So we had to keep that in mind as we developed these projects. So we started by then develop, uh, dividing the landscape into different zones. Then we had a transition area and then our upland area. We, we kept going, we did keep going back to a customer survey um, to come up with uh, the different pr uh, practices that we were developing. Next. In 2015, we wrote an action plan that was originally intended to be a, a gateway to the funding uh, due to a code requirement that we discovered, or I guess we knew about that, you'd have to reference a plan. So we came up with this action plan, which allowed people to uh, be able to, or, uh, grant applicants to adopt the plan and reference it in their application. We did realize that plan could actually end, end up being used in local planning efforts. In the plan, uh, we put enough material, uh, technical material that to do it yourself or that we have thought about the whole time could install projects themselves. Um, it was designed not necessarily even for people applying for Healthy Lakes grants. They didn't have to be applying for a grant. They could use, use the information because we find that some people just aren't interested in the grant. They just uh, wanna get going on doing projects that they feel are good for their lake. Uh, the current five practices that we have are numbered here on this slide. Uh, the first one is fish sticks. That's our in water practice. Then moving up into on the landscape, we have native plantings. We did limit the size of those native plantings to 350 square feet. And that was all of keeping the thought that that was a doable size project for a property owner. I think, you know, doing what I do and uh, Pat can certainly talk about it, having people do shoreland plantings when you get them too big, your chance for not having success definitely increases. So uh, we kept that down to 30, 350 square feet. Then you get up in the upland area, we have the rain gardens is number three, four uh, diversions, uh, which can be in many different areas and actually can, can be combined with uh, number five, the rock infiltration. As we've updated the action plan over the years, we have revisited the best practices. And to this point, we haven't really come up with any new practices to add, but we are certainly open and to um, hearing any ideas maybe any of you folks would have about new practices, keeping in mind the, that you want to keep them simple, that something doable for an uh, individual property owner on their own. Next slide. So in the, that statewide work plan, you have descriptions of all the practices. And going back to all this stuff is on the website. Each practice does have this two page, the cost materials, timeline, implementation steps, and maintenance requirements. So it's kind of a, a quick read for people that are considering doing practices. And then we get into more technical guidance. Um, uh, that gets just into more detail about the practices. This plan, the plan itself is used mainly by our team. The fact sheets, independent, interested property owners, and so they can have a better understanding of what it takes to do the practices. And the technical guide can be used by either uh, property owner or their curtain tool that you're going to find on the Healthy Lakes website is the decision making tool to determine if the practices are a good fit for your property. Um, 
the thing you need to understand about and people need to understand about healthy lake practices is they're not meant for every situation. Uh, they're not good for complex sites. They're not good for steep slopes and major erosion issues. They are meant for, um, I guess we always looked at it as they'd be the seeds uh, that we'd plant for people to start doing uh, what we believe are the right things on their shoreline properties uh, and get them started. Your neighbors see what they're doing and hopefully, you know, it would expand. Next slide. So each practice is eligible up to $1,000 and a property owner may do more than one practice with a cap of five practices on an individual property and a total of $25,000 for an entire application. Next slide. So here is what we've done so far in the, uh, the time that we've been doing Healthy Lakes. And we've got a total of 978 best practices on 556 properties in 29 counties. We've hit almost a million dollars. We have, as you can see on the left there, not used all our money in five of the six years, but we are happy with the spread across the state that we are getting um, all the way from the Southeast up to in the North and in the central part of the state. I mean, there's just some parts of the state that you're not going to see healthy lake practices because of the landscape, uh, you know, in the southwest driftless area for sure. Next slide. So here's the best part for us um, he hearing these participants' stories. You know, one of our goals in our plan is that we visit 10% of the sites each year of the folks that have received grants, uh, you know, you find it, uh, we videotape people, we use those videotapes on, in presentations, we use them on the website, but it's, it's a way of us first to do a little bit of check-in. It's not meant to be any uh, heavy-handed compliance checking, but to make sure things are getting done but also to recognize the work that these folks are doing. If we do observe an issue, we don't deal with it right at that time. We do a follow up with folks and we've visited a third of the projects to date and only had a handful of issues. Some of them were actually just, um, but we did actually have one that was a total fail. Next slide. Uh, we did have some changes for 2020. Uh, we've added rivers. So it actually is not just healthy lakes anymore, it's healthy lakes and rivers. Uh, we also were able to add uh, in 2020 that you can add properties to an open grant. So if you didn't hit your 25,000, there is an opportunity to, if you've got new property owners, you can add them to the current grants you have. You can also substitute out properties. Next. You're gonna hear from Pat and our team has known it the whole time that the local champions are the key to successful Healthy Lakes grant projects. Um, we can talk all we want about how great these practices are, how important it is you do them, but it really helps tremendously to have people that are neighbors and friends out there doing these projects and the excitement they show and the influence they can have with their neighbors. Uh, we've had some of these folks actually, and a few of them participate in our workshops at the annual convention, uh, every, the Lakes Convention every year, and they do their own workshops. Some of them are really, really committed to Healthy Lakes and, and making the program expand. Their passion really comes through when you, when you hear them uh, talk. So I got to say,
being an enforcement, zoning enforcement for 24 years, it really has been a breath of fresh air to participate in Healthy Lakes and deal with property owners that want to do these things that otherwise I am out there trying to convince people to do and dealing with property owners that really just want to do it has been really refreshing. And that concludes my portion. I guess Pat would be up next. Yep, can you hear me, Tom? Yep, we can hear you. All right, good. All right, thank you, everybody. Uh, most of, a lot of people on here probably know me, but I'm Pat Kilby, Marquette County Land and Water Conservation. Been here oh, 22 years or so. A uh, couple more years in another county, a little bit of time with DNR and NRCS, so I've been around a little bit. Seems like uh, I'm always dealing with lakes, so it kind of falls in. My title here, I noticed actually this morning, success and failures. Failure, it's uh, a misleading title. We really didn't have any failures. Uh, maybe learning, but certainly not failures. So a little misleading there, so don't pay attention to that word. That's more about starting from scratch, I guess, and that's what my job here today is explaining to you uh, how we got there and what we did, and it seems pretty successful so far. So next slide, please. Uh, a little bit of history where we came from. I kind of thought, this is a joke in a little way, but not that uh, Tom, who was just speaking, our zoning administrator, was part of the original Healthy Lakes team. So I thought we should probably, you know, at least try this program. Uh, between Tom's office and mine in the past, mainly with buffer plantings, we did mitigation back in the days of mitigation with enforcement. And people were forced to do things in plantings, buffer restorations, uh, never really were too successful. So this is kind of a breath of fresh air where you get people that want to do it versus you're forcing them to. Uh, look back to history is we have limited time to do it and we only have three people in our department. So I'm kind of the man. Uh, the other two are off the hook. I took it on. So I'm the one running around doing this stuff. Um, we had one landowner from the get go on Buffalo Lake, well, I'll say pushing the program. Uh, nice guy but could never round up the troops. And we had always said, at least have five people together for five practices to make this work. He could never get it going. And in the end, we kind of found out uh, he wasn't the most popular person amongst the Lake residents. His heart was in the right place, great guy, but uh, this really didn't get it off the ground. He wasn't the champion. And I know, uh, even though Tom and I are from the same county, he mentioned champions. We didn't tie that word together with each other. Uh, you needed we needed a champion and you will too and you're, you'll hear me say this champion uh quite a bit so if you could jump to the next slide please i don't want to bore everybody with before and after pictures i think everybody's seen you know especially with planting great however this kind of leads into my next part uh note the it's this mode right down to the water's edge uh, pretty unattractive. You do have the wood duck house here you can see on a post and the railroad trestle obviously in the background. So kind of focus on those two things and remember them uh, when we jump to this next slide. Next slide, please. And there it is. You can see the wood duck uh, house in the corner and the train track trestle. Uh, two things I wanted to show there was uh, obviously before and after uh, looks great. However, these are your champions. Uh, when these two came on board, uh, actually, Karen had started it. She learned about it at, not even through our department, she learned about it at the Lakes Convention and came into my office full bore uh, and then teamed up with Chris on Buffalo Lake. And they have been a godsend for us for this program. Uh, they're actually helping people uh, plant their plantings now and uh, they're almost too into it, which I don't want to sound negative, uh, but they are very motivated. And uh, I suggest everybody, if you can, to uh, find yourself, it, it's not easy, I know, but if you get some champions on a given lake to uh, run, grab the flag and run with it, it's gonna help you, especially if there's time constraints. So I wanna thank them because they uh, they will be watching this later at a recording, So, but they uh, definitely helped us here in Marquette County. Next slide, please. How they helped, pretty basic, you know, they helped spread the word mainly. People liked them, which is really important. They're not pushy. They're excited, uh, but they're not pushy, which helps. 
uh, grasp social media, grasp different things to get it out there. Let's let's promote this. Went to the Lake District meetings, uh, the Ecology Committee, and different things, and got people going. Uh, we got a little workshop together. They helped me plan it. Uh, the biggest thing is through the beginning with spreading the word is they helped me with time constraints. Obviously, I've got a, a lot of other things going on and uh, help. they really help. So again, I'll, I'll stop saying it, but the uh, the champion thing for you, try to find somebody to buy into it if you can. Next slide, please. Change direction a little bit here just to show you where we're at, uh, 2019 to 2020. Uh, we're up to 29 practices now, and then we're up to 14, 15. I think there's a couple plantings going in as we speak right now. Uh, September gets busy when it comes to people planting these. Uh, pretty basic stuff. One thing you need to note is plan on substituting, sell a property, lose interest, whatever reason. Uh, one stopped returning emails and calls, so I just took them off the list. Uh, one was a divorce, I think. It's very simple to uh, substitute landowners, and I'll talk a little bit later on that when we talk about the uh, uh, when you're applying for the grant, but you're definitely going to uh, be changing landowners. Uh, hopefully not, but uh, with those practices, only ones we put in so far are uh, obviously the native plantings, fish sticks, infiltration, and diversions. We can't really get rain gardens off the ground in Marquette County. Uh, I don't know why, but it seems like everywhere we go, people just, they do not want to look at rain gardens. Even back when we would do mitigation type stuff, uh, rain gardens are never a big sell. Next slide, please. Applying for the grant, kind of the early pitfalls. Uh, I was a newbie to a new program and kind of lost. Uh, there's great websites out there, there's different things, but it's, it still doesn't. I've actually talked to a couple counties here in the last month that are trying to get one off the ground. And as good as this Healthy Lakes program is, there's still stumbling blocks and different things. Uh, but what I've learned, honestly, is don't stress about it. And I just told somebody this from another county, just, just go with it. Uh, there's forgiveness, I think, because everything I've done, uh, I get forgiven on and we're good to go and the program's successful. So just go with it. Uh, get to know your DNR grant manager, if you don't already. I was dealing mainly with Chrissy Kozik and Alex uh, throughout the things. And a lot of dumb questions you asked, but the, I could not find the information. And I know a lot of it's changed. It's been a couple of years now, but... Uh, get to know them, and your lakes biologist too should be able to help you. Uh, another thing in applying for the grant and you're doing site visits, uh, th this sounds kind of little and minuscule, but I was driving around, going here, going there every different day, you know, and finally I'm like, why don't I just schedule these so I can go out to a lake and nail four or five at a time? Uh, it's, it, again, sounds simple, but makes it a lot easier. Uh, line them up and just boom, 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 down you go, and you're, you're sick of talking when you're done, but you nail it all in one day or so versus stretching it out. Uh, one other thing was there's no set forms to use with the program and like participation pledges, cost share agreements, final reports. Uh, there's examples, which are fine, but when I'm doing a participation pledge or mainly a cost share agreement, you know, I, I feel like everything should be run by corp counsel, which is not needed, but uh, and maybe that's changed too with the program, but I've just, I developed my own from the examples. Uh, again, people can ask me or email me and I can send you ours. What we've done, we'll share things because it's, I got a template from somebody uh, to do it. Same thing with the final reports. So uh, it gets a little little shaky there, but again, just go with it. Uh, it's not that big a deal. Uh, again, examples are out there, but you are gonna have to uh, make your own when it comes to forms. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, we applied for the grant. Uh, okay, good, we got it. Part of me was like, oh, well, I wish I didn't get this in a way, not being negative, but here we go. And this uh, Healthy Lakes website, the downloads on there are key to this. I handed this uh, planting, the 350 square foot, this is just the top snip of the uh, planting guide. This is the Bible to give to people. Uh, great document, helps them. Uh, the plant lists are in there that they have to follow. It spells it out, how to plant it, what to do, what not to do. Uh, can't stress enough fact sheets for each of the practices, which are great. Uh, every time I went somewhere, I had a box in the truck that I handed these out to people for no matter what practice they were doing. Uh, but 
plan on this 350 foot square foot uh 350 square foot native planning guide is one that you're going to be handing out a lot now uh, next slide please uh, just continuing on, we applied for the grant. Okay, great. Uh, put the responsibility on the landowners. Uh, I can't stress this either. Unless you have a lot of time to devote to this, if you have a lake specialist in your county or something, maybe that will help you, but we didn't have that. It's me. So uh, put it on them. Have them do before and after pictures. Email them to you. Uh, then you can just, you know, into your files instead of you taking it and organizing it. Again, it sounds... Oh, that's such a little thing, but really when you got six or seven going on and different pictures and you get back to the office and I'm like, well, whose was that? And different things happen when you don't look at it for a week. So uh, planting list. I tell everybody I don't have a green thumb. Uh, don't expect me to give you too many uh, you know, tips on this. You have to be able to do it. I can barely grow grass in my yard. Uh, have them pick out their plants, show them that guide, let them do it. Uh, and then again, stress that they're in charge. They're doing it because then you have the buy-in too. And so far, everybody I've dealt with, they're into it. They have bought into it. They want to do it. Uh, and I think it helps because I've made them kind of, hey, I'm you're on your own type thing. I'll, I'll guide you. I'll answer questions, but we'll go from there. Plant substitutions. Get ready to combine the, combine the plant lists and look up plants. Uh, in the early days of the first couple of practices we had, uh, people, you know, there's, in Marquette County, we can go from on the, right at the very lake shore to be in a wet soil, uh, 20 feet away, 15 feet up the slope, it's dry sand. So one plant mix for the most part uh, that you see in the guide, it's hard just to peg one, one size fits all, grab the butterfly, dry, you have to mix those, which is not that big a deal. Uh, but just get ready for it to combine them. And I'll touch on that a little bit here too later, but... Uh, also, you'll be looking up plants. Pat Goggin, I think, was I seen listed in uh, some earlier flyers that he would have to approve substitutions. I think he got sick of me and kind of stopped answering my emails, and I just went, you know, when I'm a professional, I know what these plants are, and if I don't, I can look them up. And you will have people want to substitute plants that uh, are invasive or uh just not native so you got to be careful there but that's pretty easy to do you, you you most likely will have that happen and another thing provide plant material sources agricall uh, my champions uh, stumbled upon agricall also for a discount uh same thing with prairie nursery uh they just recently came on board with a little discount also uh, i'm not promoting companies here these two will work with healthy lakes uh, there's other sources out there uh but these two found discounts so I'm, I'm not saying you'll get a discount for your county or your program through them, but I, you can certainly call them and talk to them because, and I'll give you some information at the end on who to talk to, but uh, that helps with shipping and costs and different things. And then lot landowners will uh, find their own sources, which this will come up in, I think, uh, in a little bit here too. Uh, there's plenty of nurseries out there where you can get plants, uh, even I think Lowe's or uh, Home Depot and different ones have different ferns or stuff that people will be wanting to buy from. So, hey, if it works, it works. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this kind of starts to wrap it up, the staying organized part. Uh, what I mentioned earlier, combining the plant lists will happen. Uh, you'll have some from the deer resistant mix in that guide to the butterfly, uh, or we don't like purple or Uh, it'll happen. But, but what I found, the first one that I did, and one of my champions went hog wild on the different nurseries and different plants, and it was like a mess of receipts to look at. And I learned right there, have them summarize these plant lists. Even highlighting uh, the light blues were the deer resistant dry, the uh, pinks were the wet soil or whatever type, you know, just something so you can easily look to make sure those plants are in the plant list. Uh, you have obviously you can't just go out and, and completely veer off of the plant the suggested plant list but when you start mixing them together you have to prove that they're there so having them highlight really again it sounds little and some of you're probably like oh what's the big deal but when you start digging through all these receipts and you've got six on your desk uh, it really gets kind of annoying so uh, same thing with receipts some landowners the from every different nursery to this for a special fern or a special, and, and that's great. 
However, have them summarize, and when you get it, spell it out for you. Uh, again, something little, but when you add all these together, it's a lot. The labor sheets for in-kind match, easy thing to do. I, I think everybody knows where those are. Uh, these are all available on, from DNR's website. Uh, easiest thing to do, however, yeah, I've had people with their plantings come up, you know, four or five hours short, and I called them, oh, we thought we had enough, so we stopped documenting, but I'm like, I know it took you more than that many hours, because I've, on these days that I worked with you on this, you weren't even there, so you'll have them shorten themselves on hours, put all the hours down, uh, and again, to wrap it up, can't stress enough to make the landowner take charge, uh, ownership, whatever you might want to call it, uh, tell them from the get-go, it's, I'm here to guide you. I'll get you the money. We'll cut you the check. I'll get the questions answered. However, you do it. Uh, and like I said, I think it works because they're into it and they have ownership. So, and next slide. And uh, this is going to be recorded, but just some resources for you. Agricall. Megan is the contact down there. Uh, great discount from them. Uh, again, I can't guarantee you'll get one, but I wouldn't see why not. Same thing with Prairie Nursery. Uh, and then use the Healthy Lakes uh, website. Uh, the download tutorials and different things are on there uh, to hand out to landowners. And I, I email out the link to that and to the downloads to so many people with this project. And uh, that's a, that'll save you headaches in the end, too. So, And that's all I have. So if any questions, I guess we'll uh, look for them in the chat. Haven't had, seen any questions yet, but just a reminder, if you have any questions, to put them in through the chat box. But I think you're good to go, Pat. Thank you. Sounds good. So Colton and I are up next and we're kind of going to tag team the next part of the presentation. And so we're both going to just do our introductions now. And I had to laugh, Pat, when you maybe you noticed a change on your title slide. I realized I didn't even make a title slide. So we'll do our <laughs> introductions to our first slide here. Um, my name is Caitlin Anderson. I work for the Polk County Land and Water Resources Department. I've been here since 2011 and um, mostly do a lot of lake planning grants, some AIS work as well. Um, and a lot of what I'm going to talk about with this grant, I wasn't actually the one out doing the site visits. Uh, it was my coworker who's no longer working here anymore that did a lot of the site visits, but I'll talk about that. And then Colton is the one with our office who will be doing kind of the site visits in the future, but I'll let him introduce himself. Yeah, hi, I'm Colton with Polk County Land and Water Resources Department, I'm water quality specialist. Um, I started back in January of this year, so I haven't been here too terribly long, but I'll get into more of what my role is with Healthy Lakes uh, coming up in the presentation. Sounds good. And Colton did intern with us back in 2017. so. I just got to say that too. Um, so he he has worked with us a little bit longer, uh, even outside of January. But I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so what we did was a little bit different. Um, so I think it's a good mix of presentations for the purposes of this PowerPoint. But how we chose to be involved with the Healthy Lakes program in Polk County was applying for a small scale planning grant. And we did that back in 2016. And so those funds were available in 2017, 2018, and 2019. And just as a reminder, if folks aren't really familiar with the small scale planning grants, they are for $3,000. And then they're a different match uh, from the Healthy Lakes. They're a 33, 67% match. So we did, uh, you know, the total project costs were more like the $5,000 range. Um, but really all that our small scale grant paid for was technical assistance and site visits. So our grant wasn't used to pay landowners to actually implement the practices. It was more to provide uh, site visits, advice, and a little bit, I guess, of promoting the program as well. And kind of the reason we did the grant in the first place was back when the program was just starting, there were a lot of folks excited about the program uh, but maybe they didn't have a real great site. So some of our early Polk County projects maybe weren't in the best location. Maybe the slope was really too steep for healthy lakes. Um, so that's kind of how we got involved and we kind of worked with the, the DNR with our lakes biologist for Polk County, Alex Smith, uh, to, to draft this application. 
So this is a photo of Big Blake Lake, and you'll hear a lot about Big Blake Lake in the next slide. Um, but just as a reminder, the, our grant was just to do the site visits, decide which practice should be installed on each property and where it should be implemented. Uh, and what we did was we had a number of lakes in the county, districts mostly, who had applied for Healthy Lakes funding back in 2017. Big Blake Lake was one of them. Uh, Big Round Church Pine was another. I believe Pipe Lakes, Magner Lake. So we had a number of lake districts who we knew were going to be coming in for Healthy Lakes funding. And what we started out by doing after we got the grant was reaching out to those lake districts and associations and just letting them know that we have a small scale grant and that we were available for free, uh, covered by the grant for support for their individual grants. We had also promoted, you know, we didn't say you need to be already having an active Healthy Lakes grant or you need to be, you know, thinking about doing it in the future. We would do site visits for, for any lake or any individual that, that really reached out to us, but we did start by promoting it to the folks who already had active grants. And then we have a Polk County Association of Lakes and Rivers. And so we would post, uh, I think we did an announcement on their news and then at, any of the meetings and any lake meetings that we went to too we would just kind of plug that we were available as a resource so over that three-year grant period we did a total of 58 site visits and like i mentioned most of those were on big blake lake and hopefully the map shows up good on everyone's screens but the the yellow dots are all of the site visits and then the green dots are where the practices were actually installed so this is on, on one lake where, again, most of our, our sites uh, visits were at. And I just did a quick count this morning, so you don't have to try to count those dots, but about half of the site visits that we did actually resulted in practices being installed on Big Blake Lake. And um, in case anyone's wondering, most of the practices were the shoreline plantings on, on Big Blake Lake and on most of those 58 site visits. So then I said you'd hear a lot more about Big Blake Lake and you know I should have said it earlier but my photo credit for all of these photos in this PowerPoint all goes to Peggy Lauritsen and it was fun to listen to um, Tom and Pat talk about champions because that's that's the word I used too and I know that's how Peggy Lauritsen who is our champion for Big Blake Lake uh, identifies herself even when she's writing emails. She's a commissioner as well for her Lake District, but she always puts on her signature line, uh, Healthy Lakes Champion. And she's been doing this on Big Lake Lake since the get-go, since we got this grant. And so I know everyone else has already stressed the champions, but I do, I, I third that, that your champions really are, are super important. And I, I do think the reason that we had so much success on Big Blake Lake specifically was down to Peggy. Um, and she did a couple of pretty cool things, I think, that worked really well. Uh, I know Pat talked about, you know, driving to a site visit and then the next day, another one, and, you know, two days later, another one. And what we talked about is it really would be good to try to have a day or two days of site visits and do things back to back if possible. And so Peggy was on board with that idea and it worked really well because every year they have a spring informational meeting and they have a fall annual meeting. So Peggy would always plug Healthy Lakes at those annual and spring meetings. And sometimes we would be there too as a guest speaker, sometimes for other programs like Clean Boats, Clean Waters. Um, so we get to, to hear her talk about the program there. But she, they would always do a sign up sheet at the meeting and get folks on board. And then they would always do their site visits a week or so after those meetings. So people, I think, learn to expect that, you know, after these two meetings, there's going to be an opportunity for site visits with uh, an expert. That's kind of how Peggy identified us as being more of an expert for, for technical advice. And then the other cool thing that Peggy did, I think, in my opinion, was the folks who are at the site visit. So at least one county staff was always at the site visit, the Lake Champion. So Peggy was always at the site visit. If possible, the landowner was at the site visit. We really did stress this. I think there was maybe 
only one or two times where the landowner wasn't there. And a lot of times, if it was that case, maybe it was a board member or it was some one that a neighbor had already done a practice. So, uh, you know, but really important to have that landowner there. And for a few years, she even had a local landscaper there. Um, so that was was kind of a good fit too. Um, in my mind, that local landscaper had more of that vision for making the project even more beautiful, uh, if that kind of makes sense. So, you know, he had really a good eye for, um, I think, even selling the program even more. So that was was really great. And then after the site visit, you know, we were always there to help with with any other further questions or implementation. Uh, I didn't put it on this slide at first. Um, and actually, I should thank Colton because Colton made the slides uh, for this. Um, but I was thinking about during Pat's talk, one thing that worked well too was another district, uh, the Big Round Church Pine District. I know they did like a mass purchase of mulch. So when Pat was talking about the savings and you know maybe trying to get some of these discounts, I know that was a, a tactic that they used that was successful for them. So they they bought mulch in bulk. Uh, and then they were able to have that available for these projects at a cheaper cost. Alrighty, so this summer, um, our grant cycle has currently ended um, last year, at the end of 2019, and um, we did not decide to get another grant for the exact same thing we ha had done before, which was the um, site visits and whatnot. But we are still a resource for the lakes in the county that know we're here for the healthy lakes. Um, I've kind of been doing the site visits this summer, like a typical site visit consists of um, deciding what practice would be best for their property. Um, sometimes they have a vision of something, but it's not really the best spot or location for it like maybe um, a rain garden would be a better practice for their specific property um so we i have probably only been reached out to from about six people that are actually um have the grant through the lake itself through the lake district um for healthy lakes but i've also had for other people um that <coughs> for the lake different lakes. Um, once the right, site visit's done, so we'll go through, tell them, um, you know, what, um, what should be implemented on their property. Um, I'll go back and do a write-up and kind of just describe the site again and, um, you know, what was talked about, what is the best practice that I feel or we decided on for that location. Um, and I'll also send a lot of the healthy lakes information like they were saying earlier um the 350 square foot planting it's got that kind of how-to guide for it and i will send them that information i'll send them all the links with it that are directly related because going into it i might not have known if they want to do a rain garden fish sticks or the planting but after that we'll kind of get an idea of um all right we're going to do a 350 square foot native planting so i'll send them all the information on that and i'll already know kind of what the soil type is and whatnot so i can even help them limit the plant list down a little better um so basically just um still helping them get through the process but really um that lake champion is the one who they're gonna ultimately go through and talk to we just provide a site visit and a little write up and more more input than the maybe the champion could give them um they're more for the um actual paperwork part of it, it would be through more of the lake champion as how it's set up for like this summer but like i said earlier i've been on other site visits for people and have recommended healthy lakes to them that are um you know on a lake district that does not have a program yet um you know i'll tell them things like um, you know maybe a native planting would work really well here and healthy lakes would be a great option for for this and maybe if they're not looking at doing it this summer they could go to their annual meeting bring it up we could possibly come there talk about um healthy lakes a program give them a rundown of it and 
um, you know, maybe get another district in the county on board with Healthy Lakes. So I always try to throw in a little bit of information about that, even if they don't have a Healthy Lakes grant for that district or association. So that's kind of what we've been doing this summer. Um, I guess and Caitlin will take the next slide here. Yes, so our last slide of the presentation today, we just did a quick uh, next step slide. And, you know, Colton mentioned we didn't have a grant uh, for this year to fund this kind of work, but it's something that we've always done, the site visits. Um, like Colton mentioned, we, we don't get a ton of calls every year to do site visits. And so, you know, we'll still continue to do those without grant funding and we did even prior to getting this grant. Um, but one thing that we are, are looking at doing is applying for different grant funding for next year to take a more targeted approach. And this would be to implement our land and water management plan. So we just had to redo ours. It was approved just back in December. And what we did with our land and water plan was we decided to really try to focus and prioritize our work to a single watershed. And so we did a lot of work to rank watersheds and come up with a top watershed, which for us was the Balsam Lake watershed. And so what we really wanna do is start doing things like shoreline inventories on the lakes in that watershed to help us prioritize sites for implementation, and then also to start funding BMP installation. And so we're looking at some different grant funding to do that for the next kind of three years. And this grants that we're looking at wouldn't be just to do these three things that are on the slide. Uh, we would really want to focus on the egg BMPs as well and identifying uh, more upland practices in addition to the shoreline practices, but that would just be kind of one piece of it. And then, you know, we've talked about in the future considering applying for a Healthy Lakes grant specifically because a lot of the folks that do reach out to us for site visits who are are interested right now and you know want to do something this summer still odds are they don't have an active healthy lakes grant for their specific lake a lot of them that reach out maybe aren't even part of a lake district or association uh, their lake just doesn't have one and so that's something that we've talked about doing is you know do we want to apply for for a grant for the whole county um, that would be available to, to any any lake group. Um, so that's that's kind of in the hopper. I think for for us doing these shoreline inventories and doing some of these reach outs for landowners for priority sites, um, you know, if we got the it would be a protection grant to fund that BMP installation. I think we would we would try to even do the bigger plantings with that. And so maybe, but maybe there is a place for the smaller uh, 350 square foot plantings. So those are kind of our next steps. Uh, that kind of ends my part. And so I guess looks like the questions are coming in. And so maybe I'll, I'll kind of pass it over to Penny for, for that. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone. That was really interesting. Um, I'm going to kind of summarize some of the questions and the answers because um, People have been answering the questions as they came into the chat line, but it's good to have that on our um, webinar. So people may have the same questions and we will give them the answers. So there was a question about permits and Pat had said, if they're required um, like different towns and count the county, we, we, they expect the landowner to look into their help if there's needed. And um, then Pamela had said, um, I think there was another answer. Does anyone want to elaborate on about permits? Maybe just give a little bit of information how that works, you know, because um, there's nothing we wouldn't want someone to assume because they talk to the county that, you know, their township may not have any regulations or whatever. So I know that can get tricky sometimes that everyone checks with all the different agencies on what types of permits are needed. Maybe. I, I can um, share a little bit of information. This is Pamela. 
So the, all the information says to check in with the county, especially as far as shoreland zoning regulations. And as, as the counties obviously know, different counties have different requirements um, for permits sometimes. So I think Pat's approach to suggest that the landowner um, work with the counties is a good one. I just want to mention there are certain counties that would require a land use permit, for example, to put in a rain garden. And in those cases, there can be some frustration with the property owners because they feel like they're doing the right thing, but then they have to get a permit and pay fund or money to get it. Um, and there have been certain situations in the state where they've been able to work with the county on getting waivers um, in those situations. So if you if it comes up that permits are needed for the actual activities, that's an idea. As far as DNR, the only permit that is required from a water reg perspective is for the fish sticks projects. So would a township possibly have some kind of permit needed? I have, am not aware of any projects that have required a town permit. I don't know if the other speakers or people on the call may be. Yeah, I might have misspoke a little bit on when I answered that, but we just tell everybody just in case, uh, check into permits if you're going to do this on your own. I mean, most most likely it's the county. Uh, in, important that Pam pointed out in the chat that the only real DNR permit needed is for fish sticks because it's below the ordinary high water mark. Yeah, I doubt if you'd find many towns that you would have have to get a permit from I think you're probably pretty safe if you talk to your county zoning office and uh, check with them they would more than likely know if a certain town would require a permit okay great um, Pamela would you want to talk about the funding question um, that you had answered in the chat maybe just give that information out to everyone who's listening sure the um... This, this is funded through a DNR surface water grant and within the surface water grant, there are many subcategories of grants. Um, and I'll just mention, if you're thinking of do, getting funding for planning like Polk County had done in the past, we have now what's called education planning grants. We have um, comprehensive planning grants and we have county lake grants. Our whole program has changed recently. So there's some additional opportunities to fund the upfront work of healthy lakes and rivers. Um, as far as the funding source, it's a motorboat gas tax that people pay at the pumps. Um, a small portion of that tax goes to water, re uh, water resources account um, that funds those surface water grants and a limited number of positions. And as far as we know, that funding is not threatened. Um, so this program will continue. The grant deadline is November 1st. If you look at the grant materials, um, if you're thinking about doing this, you'll see there's a September 2nd pre-application requirement. We are being flexible on that this year though. So if any counties are thinking they can squeeze in an application by November 1st, this would be the year to go for it. Very good. Um, there was a question about if this is on the shore, above the high water mark, would the DNR be involved? My take is no. Um, there's no DNR regulatory requirements above the high water mark. The DNR might be involved, you know, with um, assisting with technical assistance or follow-up site visits or something like that, but we don't have any direct authority there. Okay, I'll continue on. Another question was, if the property is located across the highway from the lake, but runoff water gathers on this property and flows through a culvert pipe to the lake, would the property be eligible to capture that runoff before it enters the lake? Should I answer that one too? Sure, wanna... whoever can answer, okay. I can. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, new this year is the addition of rivers and also shoreland zone properties are eligible. So if you're within a thousand feet of a lake or 300 feet of a river stream or the floodplain edge, um, 
people can receive healthy lakes and rivers funding. So I'm, I'm interpreting that to mean if the property is not directly riparian, is it eligible for the funding? And it would be, yes. The other alternative, I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, would be if it's you want to deal with the runoff after it gets through the culvert to the riparian property, that would be eligible as well. Okay, and if we didn't get that answered, you can just follow up in the chat or we can take that um, by unmuting yourself in a little bit. Um, Kurt had asked, can groups, organizations like Trout Unlimited, sportsmen's organizations, or watershed associations apply? And um, I'd also like to add on to that. I'm just kind of curious because I know associations may be able to apply because um, Beaver Dam Lake handles the Lake Improvement Association handles it versus the county. Um, and I'm just kind of curious, you know, who can apply, I guess. And, you know, if it's the majority, if it's the counties, lake districts, associations, or how that may play out. Sure, that's a good question. So eligible applicants are qualified lake organizations, lake districts, local governments, tribal governments, watershed organizations, if they might need to go through a review with the environmental grant specialists. Um, I am not sure about Trout Unlimited. In the past, they have been eligible for certain types of surface water grants, but not all. I think Alex Delvoy, who is also on our team, is on this call. And Alex, I don't, I don't know if you know the answer. I would suggest if we don't know the answer, to contact your environmental grant specialist so to figure it out. Is Alex out there? Do you want to try to answer or add anything to that? Alex says, yes, I would contact the environmental grant specialist in the area. And the last part of that question was, uh, is it strictly the landowner who applies for the grant? The, the landowner cannot apply for the grant. They have to have a sponsor. So does that, that means like the county is a sponsor and then they take- Yes, the that's, that's, what, Pat, that's right. what Pat's role is. He's the sponsor for these lake property owners. Right. Um, if anyone else has any questions that you want to unmute yourself and ask them, this is your time. And again, this is being recorded, so it's going to be a great resource for people out there that are looking you know, into or possibly considering that. So I would suggest once we get this posted that you share that with, um, you know, like a lake association or anyone, because I think it's going to have some good basic information for them. I just sent out the link for a quick eval. But again, anyone have any questions, more questions? If the presenters want to just put on their webcams for a second so people can see when who our presenters were today, um, if you can, if you don't want to, you don't have to, but um, and then maybe we can say, um, maybe want like Caitlin and Colton, if you want to s say your name so people know which one you are, and there's Pat. Um, and then we do have a couple more questions, but those are our presenters. I was very pleased to work with them. And Dave Ferris, I, don't, I think you were out there as well. If you, you're kind of one who um, put this together or started organizing it, and then you um, let them do all the hard work of doing the presentation. So thanks Dave for doing that and for suggesting these people, they are great to work with. Um. Oh, I'm just a producer. <laughs> and, oh. and by the way, just a quick clarification too, as long as we're still here, is on the grants, the actual practices come through a Healthy Lakes subsection of the surface water grants. And what Polk County did was a different, with just a small planning grant to support the Lake Association's Healthy Lakes grant. 
Correct. And I'm Caitlin. I know a penny you said to <laughs> say yes. our names with our video. And I don't know, it shows up different on everyone's um, webcams. Colton, you want to wave and say hi and continue on? Hey, I'm Colton. Colton. Pat? Hello, I'm Pat. And Tom. Tom's over there. And then we have Pamela, right? Yep. Hi. I just want to thank the counties for sharing their stories. It's awesome to hear county experiences and special thanks to Tom, who's been on our team for the long haul. And it's good to hear this as a breath of fresh air because Tom has been a breath of fresh air for us, especially at DNR. He's quick to kind of call us out when we're not making sense and other things. So thanks, everyone. And thanks to you, Penny, for setting this up. Yeah, it's great. Pamela yeah. calls me the, the reality check. <laughs> but it is that nice. is what we refer to them as to have positive things hey, penny. penny there's one good question i see in the yep. chat yep. uh it says have other people made good contacts with contractors in their area i can touch on that uh we for doing diversions mainly uh and little infiltration things no there's in our area there are not contractors that want to come do a thousand to two thousand dollar job uh so we're struggling with that actually with people trying to do their own when it's it's more than the average landowner can do uh so if you can get contractors on board maybe if you have three or four diversions or something to do around the lake at once maybe you can get somebody that way but otherwise we cannot find one contractor that wants to do a small job believe it or not okay and then let's ask when the applications are due um it, is that the applications for um, that are being sent to the sponsor? Is that what you mean by that? I'm thinking she probably means the Healthy Lakes and Rivers grant applications. Okay, and that's um, November 2nd or 1st? Or yes, something? It's, it's November 1st, but that's a Sunday. So this year it's November 2nd. I would suggest reaching out to your local biologists and environmental grant specialists as soon as you can though, if you know you're gonna apply November, because we're going through kind of a pre-application period right now. And those are due like September 2nd, if I remember correctly? Yes. Okay. Yep, but we're, we have a grace period this year, so that's not a hard line requirement. Great. Um, yeah, so Mary had said for the Lake Association. So um, do we answer, hopefully we answered your question, Mary? And when are the grant applications awarded? So after that November 1st, 2nd date, when do people find out? I believe March 15th. So there was a chunk of time in between, but it should be enough time to gear up um, for planting season. Okay, and we did answer Mary's question. Um, great, it's good to see the questions coming through. And so far, you guys haven't been stumped, so that's good. Anything that anybody else wants to add before we sign off? And there was a thank you. Yes, this was a great group of people. It's good to see the good work being done out there. Thanks to Tom, Pat, Caitlin, Colton, and Pamela. Um, great job. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And if you ever have a presentation that you would like a training on, please let me know and stay well, everyone. Goodbye.